every day do you get a chance to sit down with uh, a son of a preacher's son, uh, a legendary music producer, a doctor, son of a former vice president on podcast. Imagine, like, in one person. I don't think podcast gets better than this. Like I said, I think this year we, we're there. We're on the rise. We want to have, like, those conversations. And it's a pleasure to have somebody that I have been looking up to since I was a kid growing up when we heard about his name and everything that he was doing and to finally sit down with him on podcast. Welcome on podcast Malawi, Dr. Kwawanisu. Malawis. Mirando. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> ah, no, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Like off camera, we're just yeah. talking of how this podcast has always been planned. Yeah. But yeah, it never happened until today, finally. Hey. Yeah. There was Mark, Mark, and I said, Apa, Apa, well, this is a good take. Yeah, I my schedules. I know this is not Yeah, I think it's not Yeah, I think it was waiting for some of us to come sit here so we can have this conversation. Hey. Cool. Let's start in a crazy way. Tell me one of your favorite lines from all your pieces of work that you've done. One line. Uh, more powerful than strong. More powerful than strong. Yeah. What does that mean? No, it just means that I think um, how we look at, say, the, the difference between being powerful and being strong. Yeah. So you find some people who, are, who might not look physically strong, but they're more powerful oh. than they are. Ah, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. I get so it. So that's, that's my favorite phrase of all time. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the second one is more beautiful than pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to have those on t-shirts, so. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I wanted to, like, when you said that, I was already thinking, like, that could make, like, a very good tagline, something yeah, you can put yeah. on a t-shirt or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So welcome on podcasts. Q. Thank you again. And for all of you that love the podcast, as usual, this one is also sponsored by Crypto University. So, yeah, we're, we're making some money from podcasts. Ah, that's <laughs> yes, good. Shout, out, shout out to Crypto Investor for at least investing something into this space so that we can be coming here and having conversations and all that. So, for everybody who wants to learn how to trade, invest in cryptos, NFTs, um, Coins, 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 all sorts of coins. Log in to CryptoUniversity.network and learn how to trade. But let's go into the conversation. Yes, sir. Q, I've heard of Q for a long time. I've worked with Q for some time. I've followed you. I think there's a lot that we can talk about. A lot. And I actually had a whole headache last night like okay which topics do we tackle tackle like okay <laughs> where music poetry events festivals uh policy issues like oh, what all do the we above talk about? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take it one by one yeah but let's start from where it began okay. who is q and when were you born tell us give us your background um, I was born in 1979, so that makes me 43. 43. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, no, time's like, <laughs> no, I remember last time, last time, last time I came to your birthday, you were turning 37, and everyone was like, 37? But like, how old were you then? Eesh. I don't even know how old I was. Oh, yeah. I, I, I remember that birthday. Yeah, yeah we came yeah. at your place. It was a, an ambush. It was yeah, it was a wife. surprise. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So everybody yeah. just like, came through. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that was a while ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So 40? 40, 43, turning 40 44 now. this year. All right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where were you born? Uh, Lilong, KCH, to be specific. Okay. Yet, um, yeah, so I've, I've always been a Lilongwe person. Um, lived in apparently when I was born, we we're living in Area 12, but I can't remember. Okay, uh, Koma, I remember a lot, Area 10, yeah. So then I went to primary school, Mpungu, then Sogan Kanasi, mm -hmm. then Lilongwe Private, then Likuni Boys, then International School of South Africa. 
<laughs> and then the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts, and then the Academy of Contemporary Music. Oh wow! School can get good Anyway, tika mbali. Kwa doctor kusogolo kunde wili. Oh, I Oh, I want it. Si si school yolo si school yodi. Kama mwina school yodi mwina mabidi. Mabidi dila kama mwina usi yolo si school yodi. Kama mwina school yodi mwina mabidi dila kama mwina usi yolo si school yodi. Kama mwina school yodi your time at Likuni was, I don't know how it was, but I just remember some funny things, whether it was just you telling us about what were happening there and stuff like that. I just remember, oh, Likuni boys. I think you've got hey. a lot of fun stories. <laughs> from <Likuni> boys. <laughs> no, Likuni boys, hey, it, was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a very character building time. Okay. Um, so by then, when I went to Likuni boys, we were actually staying in Likuni. Ah. Yeah, as well. So actually, we come from Likuni. My mother's family comes from Likuni. Mm. All my cousins, you know, from Pamudzipo were there. All the thugs. They tell me that from one Likuni boys, you know, uh, some guys tried to tease me. And then I remembered, ah, ah. I don't know. Hey, 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 <laughs> so that, that's how I survived. Yeah, I, I remember those stories. I think we had with Furukozawa and Kanye. Like, yeah, there's a form one when yeah, you went there. That yeah. happened. Yeah, that's how I survived. Yeah, there the were the crazy yeah. stories of how things, how you were just like protected. That was very protected. by like yeah. all the elder people and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I heard you actually went there when you were very like. Yeah, I was eleven. Yeah. 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 That was like a long time ago to to be in secondary school at eleven. That's like unheard of. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the youngest age you could be Kusegunda then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Komaso, I repeated twice. Nabanga repeat standard six. So, Kudilongwe private, Najoka standard six. Kupita, no, Kutsokankanas, Najoka standard six to go to Longwe private, and I repeated standard six. Uh, but Longwe private only went up to uh, standard six, and then you go to form one. So then I went to Form 1 and then Form 2, Lilongwe Private. And when I went to Liguni Boys, I started Form 1. Wait a minute. What, at what age did you start school? This is good. This is good. No, I think the big difference in the Abudi system where you go private was up to standard six, and then you go into form one. Form one. But many ya ya jimala in the standard eight. Eight. Yeah. yeah. So I think the gaona ina kodi. I've gone through all the way to standard eight. Mwina naka the difference could have just been one year. Koma, I think. For 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 government, it was the right time. Okay. Yeah. All right. I cool. think. Cool. 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 <laughs> okay. You have had a very unique journey. Uh, you have just taken us through your academic background. Mm-hmm. You were at the Liverpool Institute, Institute of Performing, for Arts, Performing yeah. Arts, and mm-hmm. then you went to the Academy of Contemporary Academy, Music. Contemporary yeah. Music. Mm-hmm. When you were young. I understand you developed a passion for music from a very young age. That's yes. what your bio on Wikipedia says. Yes. Like uh, you started playing guitar? Yeah, and, age yeah? nine. Okay. Uh, my dad taught me how to play guitar. Um, he used to, every evening, uh, then he was, I think, uh, either PS or secretary, secretary to the president cabinet, and one of those. So yes, he was busy, but... There was always time for family. So a lot of evenings, uh, he will come home, he will pick up the guitar, we sit around with my mom, my sisters, and he will play these traditional senga songs, some folk music, and the whole family would sing. And then Pangono Pangono, he will give me the guitar, teach me a couple of chords. So that's why I picked up, um, yeah, I think my, my interest for, for music started then. And then I also had an uncle, a great uncle, who played organ, Kumaula Parish. So he started teaching me that some basic music theory and a bit of organ. And uh, my other uncle, who was uh, a, a Catholic priest, who was St. Uh, Patrick's, area 18, <laughs> and I in the keyboard, uh, Yamaha. I think PSR or something. Then I in the sequence, I joined. Then you could program the into here and there. And so then. every weekend, you said, ah, come play on the keyboard. You know, continue. So I'm interested at a very, very young age. 
Yeah. So when I was, uh, I think form three, form four, I met a, I met a, a friend, Kublanta. His name was Chite Kumwenda. So he was, um, he was rapping and he was making beats using keyboard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he would do that. Then uh, we became a duo. Yeah. So then, yeah, I, I started dropping some verses. <laughs> Kumaba got my beat up and we were recording quite good song Komonda. Ah, yeah, yeah. Good song Komonda. Yeah, yeah. So he he taught me a whole bunch of stuff. And then I think the the keen interest in music production grew from there. That I think by 1996, I could basically, yeah, make a decent beat. Okay. Yeah. So your choice to go and uh, study performing arts. Was it based on your background that, oh, I think I've got this capacity yeah, music or well, what was the decision making process like? Actually, the funny thing, I was supposed to go, to go and study architecture. I thought so because, <laughs> okay, in those times, eh, yeah. parents um, would probably give you like this other path than creative industries and things like those yeah but it wasn't necessarily that it was when i was in essay in high school i got an unconditional offer to go to university before uh writing my a levels i think i'm going to the performance went to banji um commanding kabanga makani because i really wanted to get onto the music program uh during my a levels but my music theory was not adequate Okay. And they not until I think my mom had to come and say, um, if you get good results, uh, then you can study whatever you want." So I said, "Ah, okay." Um, so yeah, then I got good results. Uh, off Ayaku, I think it was Rhodes University, um, and then Dilimu Library, ku South Africa in in high school, I came across this prospectus. Yeah, the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. And I was like, oh, this this looks okay. Uh, let me see what they're offering. So I applied, I auditioned, and uh, yeah, okay, I got in. Which period was this that you were in essay in, in high school? In high school, 90, 97, 98. So, okay, from your primary school to, and you did your... Two from one from two, then, you, then <laughs> where does the high school come in again? Uh, after Liguni Boys, eh? yeah, from four Liguni Boys, I think, I think, 90, 91, 95, I think, mm. uh, 95, um, and then either 90, yeah, then after after MCE, 95 or 96, then that's when I went to South Africa to do my A levels, so that was the two year program, and 1999. That's when I got accepted to the Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. Ah, yeah. What 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 was in South Africa? Did you just go for school? Or? Yeah, school, A levels. Oh, yeah. So it's not like your family went there. No, no, just no, no, like no. You... It was just me going to school. Ah, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. True. So you you're studying uh, performing arts in the UK, and the passion I'm thinking for music is now growing. Yeah, so when I was in South Africa, I in, in high school, we had a studio in the music department. Yeah. So I was always there. Like after class, I was always in the studio uh, making beats, uh, recording. I also had an opportunity through a friend who used to stay in the town to go to Bop Recording Studios. Uh, this is where the recording studios, where the Lion King soundtrack was recorded. Wow. This was like the best recording studio, studio. in Africa. Ah. One of the best recording studios in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was an engineer there. His name was, was Kente, but he uh, sadly he passed. Uh, that was my first time to be in a professional recording studio. And I had a, an opportunity to record a, a, a group that I was part of, a quiet group called MGP <laughs> <laughs> that I was producer of. Okay. Uh, so we had an opportunity to record um, our first songs at Bob Recording Studios. Yeah. Were these so Malawians or it was like South Africans? But they were all South Africans. South I was ah, the only Malawian. Malawian. Yeah, yeah. So that was actually my first group to be part of. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Proper. Proper. No, second. From uh, my, duo. me and Dichite. Yeah, yeah you do. You yeah, and Dichite. His name was Brother Man. My name was Dash. <laughs> <laughs> Dash. 
Dash. Dash, I see. <laughs> Dash, as in get Dash. Hey, yeah, <laughs> Kamene got a job. <laughs> okay. Kamene got a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, then SA, MGP happened. I'm a visual, I'm a yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I think I experienced a lot because there was theater, there was, I did ballroom dancing. Like, I just lived my artistic life when I was in high school. Um, and it was such a great opportunity to have the chance to go to Lipa. Also, because I had no idea how big this institute was. Mm. Uh, when I went there, they're telling me I was the first African to ever be accepted there. What? Yeah. What? First African, not Malay. First African. First African. First African. This whole continent. Yeah. Wow. That was 1999. We, we we need that somewhere written down in the books <laughs> of history. We need to we need to keep that. That's like a very valuable piece of history. I mean. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. The the patron of the institute was uh, Paul McCartney, and also had an opportunity to meet him. Wow. As well. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's huge, I see. No, it was. It was. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, now these pieces now start making sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. You know, sometimes people do things, eh? You just see them that time. Mm. You don't know their formation, really, who have they met on the on the road, who have they interacted with, what has shaped what they do at that particular time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So this makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. And, and let me say, when I went to Lipa, when going there in Madzona Ngadi Shasha, you know, when they say, when they're telling me, ah, you know, we get like 20,000 applications, we choose 40 students per program, globally. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm one of the best. Yo, you go there and they are, everyone is a semi-professional, you know? And I, one, I was the youngest and the least experienced. I'm there in class. I don't know what people are talking about. I don't know what's going on. I'm winning. I'm going to go to the field. 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 That's imposter syndrome. Hey, I'm winning. What's happening? It was serious. It was serious. Oh. Yeah. So I had to work extra hard uh, getting into my sessions. Uh, my guys are in like third year students just to see how things are done. So it was a very steep learning curve, um, but very, very humbling. And I think it's important for everyone doing anything to actually be in a situation where you are up against the best, the best in yeah, the world. Yeah. yeah. Because when I guess so, Kamazona is good for Malawi. Because it means I think. Okay, so wait. What were like courses like? What were the classes like when you do practicals in performing arts? What were you studying? Yeah, so I changed the number of times. So the institute is just a performing arts institute. There is no sport. There's nothing. Yeah. So there's music programs. There was uh, sound technology programs. There was management programs. There was theater. There was dance. But even in each one, there was community arts as well. Um, it was it was quite broad. Yeah. So basically, they're like preparing people for the performing arts industry. Yeah. yeah. So even go. For the technician students, you know, there was sound engineers, there was lighting technicians, like guys who studied lighting for three years. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my guys have a studies major. Three years, three years, three studying years. lighting. Yeah. Sound engineering for three years. And the funny thing is, I actually met one of my year mates, Kumala Ah. Oh. Yeah, he's been the engineer for Lake of Stars. Ah. Oh. Yeah. His Who's name it? is Tord. Tord. Yeah. I know Tord, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were in the same year. Ah. At Lipa. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. So w- w- what were you like? Did you have like majors or it was like something that you just like uh, go into class and do all these things? Um. Yeah, so you choose, uh, so I went the music route. So you, to start with, you have a main instrument, a second instrument, plus voice. Because everyone, it didn't mean you had to know how to sing, sing. 
but you still needed to learn how to sing. Uh, uh, because if you're going there as a, as a musician, as a player, you you have to understand how vocals work, et cetera, et cetera. So you had uh, first, second instrument plus voice. Um, there were you also had to learn music technology as well. Uh, if so, that was the route I opted uh, to take, which was music technology. Yeah, so it was performing arts, uh, music. Yeah, popular music and music technology. Yeah, so that was okay. my. Yeah. And what was your instrument? Main instrument. I went in as a drummer. Oh. Yeah. You can play drums. Badly now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, ba- badly now. Yeah, so that's how I went in. Um, after that, but when I went to the Academy of Contemporary Music, then I was able to specialize in contemporary music production. So that was my program. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, got it done in two years. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you moved from playing the guitars yeah, and all those like what's your trumpet things and whatnot. Yeah, the the most important thing was not playing, but just understanding, understanding how, how instruments work. work, how they behave. When you go in from a, a composition point of view mm. and arrangement point of view, and if you're programming, if you're a programmer, not a producer, if you're a programmer, then you really know how to, could you, if you're programming brass, for example, yeah. this is how brass behaves. Yeah. If you're programming guitar, guitar in the string six, piano in the manor ambirimbiri. So if you're using a guitar sound, there's certain things that you should not do because the actual instrument doesn't have that many. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's so that's why it really comes in, or, or knowing could you, this is this instrument, this is how it behaves. So that when you are working either with a guitarist, you are able to guide them because you as, as a producer, you know exactly how you want things to come out. Mm-hmm. So if you don't understand how the, that instrument behaves, then it will be very difficult for you to achieve your outcome. So that's why it's important for if any producer to actually learn and know how instruments behave. Is this the reason why I'm just thinking as you're speaking, the reason why some songs sound so different from how they were recorded to how they come out, let's say, when people are playing them live using like the live instruments. Because maybe there were things that a producer did not know, depending on how the actual instrument itself uh, behaves, let's say, on live. So the sounds would come out different. Um, also, there's a difference, and there should be a difference between... Um what you experience in a recording and what you experience live. live. Okay. The difference should not just be good mm. But, you know, as a musician, as an artist, you know, it's important to bring something different when you're performing live. Mm. Uh, so, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Moving forward, your name is synonymous with music production. Or was. Was, possibly. Was, yeah. okay, yeah. was. And when it's when we talk about music production, we go back in history to your association or, I don't know. With real elements. With real elements. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted you to mention that. <laughs> like, to be the one saying real elements. E. Take us through what happened, who, did me, who, meet, who met who for real elements to start and take us through the journey. Okay, so I was studying in Liverpool. I had a friend, a Malayan friend who was in Manchester, um, Chimwemwe Lungu. And uh, so we'd always talk. And then she told me about this guy who raps, who was staying in London, and saying, ah, you need to meet up with this guy, Louis, or Louis then, Louis, yeah, yeah, Louis, uh, who was Marvel. Yeah, and he was Marvel. Yeah, so he, he, she sent me her number. So I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I introduced myself. Uh, I'm Q Malewezi. I'm studying music. Um, I'm doing a lot of production. Um, I hear you rap. Maybe we can. I can come down to London or something. We could, you know, see what we can do. Uh, so yeah, went to London. I think we met up. He played me. Yeah, I think some of his tracks. I think it was on a Roots beat, and it sounded really, really dope. Yeah. And then yeah, then we made uh, we made plans that he comes to Liverpool. So he came to Liverpool and then, um, yeah, we went into the studio. I had some beats. We recorded. 
I think all the things I see and uh, I think Hip Hop For You and Me, I think those were the two tracks we recorded. And then we recorded the first I Came and uh, I think we recorded something else. And and then we're like, yo, let's let's just it's do this. Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, we <clears throat> became the real elements. Just the yeah, two of us. Two of you. Yeah. So real elements, Koyamba was just me and Marvel. I was the producer. He was the MC. It was a duo. Uh, for duo. for quite a yeah, another duo. So that you got brother man and dash. <laughs> dash. Dash. <laughs> MGV. <laughs> Can I go to Real yeah, Elements? Yeah. So me and Marvel. Um, yeah. So we we produced an EP. Um, I think yeah. The the cover is I think it's somewhere on, on my Facebook profile. Ah. Where yeah, I'm in these short dreadlocks. Yes. So the cover is just me and Marvel. You know. Yeah. Of the first Real Elements EP, and then Tina Bira will not go to launch it. Okay. Yeah. To French Culture Center oh, in wow. the auditorium. Wow. I can't remember the year. Um, maybe 2000 and I can, 2000, maybe, yeah, I think maybe 2000 or 2001. I can't remember. So when we were here, uh, making the arrangements for all the, for the launch, um, we started hearing about this kid who was in the States. Dima Steniak. Okay. Uh, in the track in, I guess, or body snatch, uh, linguistics. Linguistics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, tonight we're a body snatch, you do, and fun you do. And got to this organize. So he was young, you know, this kid was on fire. Like, eh. And then um, yeah, I think we we met up and yeah, I think we God, what happened? I'm not too sure. We all just started hanging out, you know? And then we did a we did a performance called Shaq. Pretty long. Pretty long. Yeah. And then we needed a DJ. And then Marvel is just like, I've got my boy. We were together in Saints, Jan Jan Jan, yeah. and that was Kimba. Kim- oh. So Kimba Boyamba at the set yeah to your real element school go Shaq. Shaq yeah. He was like the DJ. DJ wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then we go back to Blanta and we're like, let's just do a track, all of us together. So then we did the first track with all members as you know knew them. Mm. Uh myself, Marvel, Plan B, and Sticks. And, Sticks. and that was a track called astronomical ah, yeah and then it went into the ep so now when we're launching the ep root elements had changed from being a duo it was just something that happened very naturally ah. to to a quartet <laughs> okay yeah so that's how things happen all right yeah. so it's like it happened in like different geographical spaces yeah from the UK, duo in london yeah and live up in uk mm-hmm. and then you come to Lilongo, blanta where you, uh uh sticks was staying in blanta yeah then. staying in blanta and then Shishu. kimba was yeah. kimba in was in Lilongo, yeah ah. yeah that was like a very international <laughs> collaboration <laughs> of malarians working together okay yeah so that's how room elements came into the picture into the picture yeah and what was the journey like uh with real elements Oh no! It was. Uh, I think creatively, it was one of my best experiences. I learned a lot about making music, about hip hop music, um, just the process. Working with the guys; these guys are incredibly talented. Not where, but are. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah, it 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 taught me a lot of things, uh, both good and bad, um, as well. We were young. Yeah, you know, yeah. we were young. Uh, the music we were making. When I listen to it now, <laughs> no, because like the topics and the things that you know, when I when I listen to tracks like African Star, these are like concepts or movements that are happening now. Mm. You know, in terms of the African consciousness and mm. kind of being woke, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we <laughs> it's things that are relevant now. You know. Um, we've got a track called Hip Hop for You and Me, which is talking about the power of African hip hop. And we did this in like 2003, four, you know? Mm. Um, but the biggest lesson, I think, if you are in a group situation and you have a vision as a group, um, you have to be mindful as the group is developing yeah. that individual visions will start developing as well. Yeah. And if you're not servicing your group vision uh, against the individual visions, 
Mudzabe is a guy uh, you cannot consolidate the two. Kutu ya indivision ya ke, indivision ya ke, vision ya ke, kwenda kuti ya group ya jano, yukukani ka kutani, kuti ibuwele pa mozi. Yeah, so I think for me that's the biggest lesson, not just in music groups, but anyone, anyway, okay. it, it could be a business venture, it could be anything that involves more than one person. Yeah. yeah. Even a podcast, if Kelion today says, uh, guys, I'm out, we'll be sitting here with no one to record, we need to go find <laughs> someone who can say, okay, 10 p.m. I say, guest up, up is it, okay, I'm coming. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, those are valuable lessons. So, what happened now um, with Rue Elements? How did it end? And what was the conversations like? For um, all that like, no, happen? things happened. We had our differences. Um, I think the the rest of the guys wanted to move to either Malawi or Kenya. I had uh, I was working as a music producer and songwriter for a company called Giant. Um, so my my career was in the UK as a music producer. Oh. You know, that was what was, you know, bringing food on the table. Uh, so, and other differences, I ended up, you know, not being part of the group. Mm -hmm. uh, they continued. So tracks like Nyambo, Jan Jan, those were done without me. Oh. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. So it's just like the, the three. The three, I, I'm, I'm not sure who they worked with. Yeah, but there were a couple of other songs that were done uh, after me exiting so you uh, were the first person to leave the group yes okay yeah and uh when you left what did you hear who, who was the next one and were you still in touch with the guys uh um, not not really not really I, I wasn't okay yeah all right cool i think we'll come back to real element stuff <laughs> later on, <laughs> later on, because there's a bunch of some questions that people like just say, okay, Q, please, this question. Hey. So those will come uh, towards the end of, ah, the, okay. uh, of the conversation. So um, one thing that we cannot take away from you is um, you come from a very well-known family in Malawi, mm -hmm. mainly because of your late dad. Mm -hmm. Um he became the vice president mm -hmm. of this country. And you being somebody who is outgoing like you, I don't know if you have always been outgoing or not it's very, something that you have just not, developed. Not very outgoing. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Be because uh, I'm saying yes, outgoing I, I, because I you're in the, yeah. in the creative space. Yeah, the creative and space. Yeah. You, you just can't hide. Yeah, you can't. You just need to be there, work with yeah. artists. Work with, so you'd be considered outgoing in that nature than if maybe you had like a profession job. I get you. As in a, an office, in a corner office somewhere. Where Mango Vanga Maganas. <laughs> yeah. So, take us through um, when you, your dad became the vice president, or maybe even prior to that, what was the family dynamics like moving from civil service to developing to becoming the vice president, and how that actually actually played on <laughs> that's you? A, that's a very interesting question and time. So. My dad, Anali Mbomala Kamuzu, he rose to be the secretary of president and cabinet. And that was a very dangerous position. SPC. SPC. Oh, yeah. They never lasted long. Yeah. So he ended up getting fired. And um, I think that was 89, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why we moved. Because then we were kicked out of uh, the SPC residents. Ah. Uh, luckily, by then, we had built, they, or they had built the house Kulikuni. Kulikuni yeah. That's a family home. Uh, so yeah, we moved there very quickly. Um, and it was a very difficult two years because a lot of things happened. You can imagine that time being an enemy of the state. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, okay. I think for people now, eh, mm -hmm. when this changes, this in government happened, mm -hmm. would you it's normal because there's the opposition there. There are always people that are already outside the system. Yeah. But I think that time, the moment you like move out of the civil service, mm -hmm. those were, it was a one party rule. So it meant you are on the side and you are alone. You are on the side. You, there's the state machinery being used against you mm. to be specific, special branch. Mm. And you know what they did. Yeah. So actually for us as a family, for my dad to have survived the two years, or us as a family to have survived 
that two years before change came, it's the grace of God. Because so many things happened Happen, that yeah. we should not have been here. Oh, wow. I yeah. can I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So then uh yeah, join the underground movement. Many is my ambas which is uh um a pressure Mad- group. Uh, oh, I'm a party yeah. pushing yeah. yeah. Um until you joined UDF, became the second vice president of UDF. Uh Get out go referendum we Jan ninety three. Uh Amala and Avoda would you know we want Jani, Mati Party politics. Can I go general elections ninety four? Mene UDF ima ina wina. Actually, ana wina tiny gonna be a running mate. Okay. Yeah. So the ninety four elections, it was Bagiri. Bagiri moves the man I am president. Eh. Ali Sanaima Yekaik. Yekaik. And then Bagili appointed my dad as Vice president, okay. but my dad was second vice president for of the UDF party. for the party, so it was uh, caused a bit of issues yeah. in the party, um, because the first vice president was Aleke. Oh, Aleke Banda. Yeah, Aleke Banda. Okay. Uh, but anyways, they figured it out and uh, moved forward. Now, how many Ndili guli guni boys? Namva sing sing sing. I didn't even know. Okay. That my dad got appointed. It happened so quick. It was actually my guy Zena go school and I'm go boy Zandu Zuda. I say, hey, why pull out? Why pull out? Why pull out? Do you buy it? And then I go do vice president. Are you serious? But now many and we had this teacher who used to, hey, I can say uh, emotional abuse. And then I was like, why MCV one V? Did my talk in class. He was a history teacher. And because we were rebels, nali mwana wa rebel. Wale we. Ankandi nena. Yeah, he would talk stuff about my dad. You know, in class. Wow. And tundukuma sega. Wow. Yeah. And then, hey, that, that's one of my best wow. days, bruh. <laughs> that's uh, one of my best days when that news came through. Hey, tigalo yonomu history. Tigalo yonomu history. Tigalo history. Tigalo history class. Amwene muntanabu ya ndijin sunamu. Yeah. Mm, I'm always <laughs> 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 I ended up dropping history because of that guy. Because I know he, he tortured me. This is gonna take a most on class here. No, imagine it. Did you form two? I think I was about to write JC. I can't remember. Ababanduda Ababanduriat. Dara VB. Dodi K A Saints Gabinaja. Mogoya? Nyemba zi kuzi siye. Nyemba. Ah, kuji. <laughs> you stayed there. Mundo wa kenda. Mamalewez. Ah, no. Made sure I stayed there. Paka da MCE. Wow. Hey, doing everything. That everybody other, else. Eh, hey, yeah. kakuna li kusei sa cha 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 ya. Popo. Wow. <laughs> what is the meaning? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> There's I'm, I'm... no special treatment. Okay. Hmm. I think you are just a normal kid. Normal guy. Okay. You were, or anyway, you were a normal student. When you know, you, my dad is the first president of this country. No, I had, I had a, quite near it. Uh-huh. I had a, a normal life. Yes, there were things, uh, vehicle, security, etc., etc. Um, the only reason or the only times I'll, I would have security would be when I'm going to a show, you know, something where there's going to be, but that came even later. Mm. Even, yeah, I'll just get out of the gate, walk into town with my friends. Bobo. Okay. Yeah. It was a different time. Yeah, I think because yeah. there's no social media. I'm thinking, because I'm trying to mm. figure out like these days, because really, everybody in the community follows what you want Mm. As our studio, my brother was a vice president in Dindani. We know mm. them from Facebook, Instagram, and our color. Hey, so everybody mm. has knowledge of this is how they when they see one, they go, oh. Mm. So I think probably that time, because of um, fewer connections to like the larger community, apart yeah. from people that were close to you. So maybe the pressure wouldn't be too much. No, it wasn't. I was young as well. Um, but also, I think one thing that my dad always told us was Guti, whatever position you attain is going to come with things. Those things are not your things. They also as it engage. 
you can only be proud of the things you build with your own hands. And I think that has never left us. Left you. Yeah. yeah. Dose as a, as, as a family. family. Yeah. 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 So even after, after his, his two terms, the transition back to normal, actually didn't really feel like okay. much. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I like enough. It was, it was boys. Yeah. When the boys, yeah, it was a mixed, the square mixed. Boys yeah. and girls. <laughs> probably, probably it could have been a different situation. <laughs> Maybe it couldn't be you, but the other gen would be thinking, ah, Muni a president, so they would want to be associated with. No, that 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 was happening. You know, um, you go Kulilonga girls, ah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know there's always a thing. I, think. I don't know if it's still there between Little Boys, Little Boys, Little Boys and Little Girls. Little Girls, Little Little Girls, Little girls St. John's. St. John's. What's that? I'm a sick one. I am a Jones. You Jones, you're legal one town. If you're that boy, you're going to have a boy. I'm 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 going to have a there was always <laughs> tension, <laughs> tension. Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, let's just go back to your family. Mm. How many are you in your family? And let's say as growing up, what were like the past for the other, your siblings like? Okay, so I'm the last born. Huh? <laughs> I didn't mind asking. Boy. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. That's the last born. born I say. <laughs> um, the first born, Ntsikana, um, Dr. She lives in Canada with her family. Okay. And as Zamandi to Zama sciences is stuff that she only knows. Yeah. <laughs> and then second born is uh, another girl. Her name is Tine Boazi. She's in the UK in Essex. Yeah, she's a, she's a figures person. Okay. Yeah, she's a chartered accountant. Uh, and then my brother, Justin, Justin Jr. Jr. Yeah, so he's more like me uh, in terms of the arts, media. Etc. Etc. Except you and then do fat. Yeah. Yeah. Do fat. Sorry, got enough. Yeah. And then me. Um. But I also had uh, an adopted sister who passed away when she was, I think, fifteen, sixteen. Oh. Yeah. Her name was Monica. Ah. Okay. Cool. So, um, you've done music with the real elements. You're doing production. Take us through your production days. After producing for the Rue Elements, you went to the UK now, where actually there was one of the reasons why you left the U, uh, the Rue Elements to focus on your work yeah. doing production in the UK. Yeah. For the UK films. Yeah. So even when Rue Elements was happening, I was already working as a producer for giant uh, productions. So mm-hmm. yeah, I had, a, I had a, a, yeah, a good contract. Yeah, we're making, I had an opportunity to work with some top UK acts, um, top German acts, uh, Korea, uh, French. So yeah, I had a I had a I had a good time. Okay. You know, I had a good time. Um, I same thing. I was young. I didn't have someone looking out for my best interests. I potentially I should have made a lot of money uh, because. Yeah, I mean, I had, um, I had, I had, I have a number two record in Germany. You know, wow. uh, a group called Brosis. They were the winners of Idols um, that year. Idango Yamba. Yeah. Yeah, as well as other songs I co-wrote. Um, yeah, but you know, I did, I did some si- silly things like, you know, allowing my rights to be bought out because I'm looking at the money and the offer, and I'm young. I really don't know the value of my contribution, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, when I look back, I think I could have done things slightly different. Yeah. But no, I had a, I had a great time. I had a great opportunity. I learned so much working in in the industry, yeah. you know, with... The best. The with industry. the top, top professionals. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> any, any names that people can relate to that, let's say you worked with or you produced, like the popular names that... Uh, People today can actually like oh yeah it, it might be because of time but uh, I think yeah sugar babes 
Yeah. Um, the latest member to have joined the Sugar Babes, her name was Emma. So she was signed to the production company I was working. Mm -hmm. okay. And she was a year below me at the Academy of Contemporary Music. So her name was yeah. Emma. Yeah. So she there was it was a duo with her sister. And then when Sugar Babes happened, and I did a lot of tracks in her development. So when she joined the Sugar Babes, it was like we went in as producers with that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think Sugar Babes prob probably the biggest um, group. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, when when did you come back to Malawi, and what was <coughs> uh, the reason for coming back? <laughs> I came back in two thousand and five. Um, two thousand and four were my general elections. I had come back in two thousand and four to help my dad because my dad had resigned from UDF and decided to stand as an independent candidate. So again, we found ourselves on the other the side, side yeah. against yeah. the state machine. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, my brother was still in the UK um, and next to my dad were all strangers. So I decided to come back and accompany him all throughout the entire campaign. Yeah, campaign. Um, and then, yeah, so I experienced a lot of things. Uh, of course, politics is dirty. You see, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, you see things. Yeah. Um, after the elections, stuck around for, I think, two weeks. And then um, the pressure did not die down. I think I'd also exposed myself. And then I was just like, I think Ningo Berira guy to UK. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the UK. But I'd gone through a lot. It was difficult just to pick up from where I left off. So I, I had a breakdown. Okay. Yeah. So I had a, I had a breakdown. I just stopped everything. I, I, I didn't finish my contract. I just stopped going to the. I stopped Shinaji Jos and Imango Kar. I was just reading. Um, I should have gone for therapy. Yeah. But. I, then it wasn't. It wasn't anything that you'd think about. <laughs> like, oh, okay, is yeah. this what mm. Yeah. So I think after a while, yeah, I eventually decided, but let me let me go back home and just recuperate Bobo. So I came back in 2005. I thought I was just going to be here for a bit. Um, and then when I came back, I saw Malawi in a different light, started seeing all these opportunities, and then, yeah, decided to stay. So pretty much I left everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, and then that's, so because like I went back after my elections and tried to get back into the music production, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I associated music with my breakdown. So that's why I stopped music. Okay. I think it's, it's this thing, like, you know, I think I've got a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm taking a certain a certain drink. I know I had mm -hmm. this with a uh, orange squash. Mm -hmm. I, I had Marelia, mm -hmm. and the only thing that I could take that time was mm -hmm. orange squash. Mm -hmm. When I recuperated after some time, every time I have a contact with the uh, orange squash, it was taking <laughs> me back to the time. I was like, no, nah, I think there's an association of orange squash. <laughs> so you like try to yeah. stay away from things like those. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's for a minute go back to the 2004 general election. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were on the road yeah. during the campaigns every day. That yeah. you're, what was your role in that? What were you doing? <laughs> uh, we can talk about that off, oh. off the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, you don't want to people know. No. Ah! <laughs> okay. Because I'm, I'm interested because. One of the things that I want us to talk about is your personal role in politics of Malawi. So we know you as this creative and whatnot. And by the fact that your dad was a politician, I was thinking that Q must have played some roles somewhere. And the fact that you said really you were in the political, uh, the campaign trail. That's why I was like, what was he doing? What, what has been in his role? His role? Because it's not always in public. Your politics is not in public. I there's no politics. The role oh. then was I was uh, looking out. 
for my dad. Okay. Yeah. I was making you, you're, sure he you're was more safe. like a personal assistant, kind of. Yeah, we could say that. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Not strategist and everything. no, no, no. They there were people doing that. Doing, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you're here, you're seeing Malawi differently, you're seeing all these opportunities. What were the things that you studied? Like saying, okay, I wanna do that, I wanna do that. And how did you yourself plug yourself into the, the Yeah, scene? um it was interesting, uh, because I came back and then I'm looking at my qualifications. I think even my parents I may not call you my degree as a now, you know. You know? Um and then I was like, no, there has to be something that I can do. So one of the things I went to the British Council, I just introduced myself to the director. Then I think the director was Mark Jessel, top guy. I was like, this is me. This is what I've studied. Um, if there's also having uh, UK qualifications. UK qualifications. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was and like, if there's... actually the background of being in the UK. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah, we had a good chat, and then next thing, uh, oh yeah, then uh, because of the music, my road is because now I had relocated. Oh. So now, Kosoma here calls me, I'm when, but when I check it out, now this is from my work in the UK. In the UK. I'm when, Dora Riabo. My road is when I was up to that shit. So I'm like, how can Dora Riabo? So I bought a, a, a peer system. Sakino, we know, I guess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anyways, after that, I introduced myself to, to British Council. Um, and then uh, the director gives me my first job, which was to DJ at the residence. Oh. Yeah, at an event. I have a speaker. speaker. I mean, go go Gaspina. Ah, Bobo. Did that, I think, a number of events. Um, next thing. Uh, he calls me, he said, oh, we, we want to implement an arts program. We, we've been doing that in Kenya. And that was then Creative Enterprise, which was what WAPI, Wapi uh, yeah. fell under. So, yeah, I was tasked as a consultant for the British Council for, I think it was two years, really? yeah, to implement Creative Enterprise. Program. So that's how I really, really got started in the creative sector. Uh, that was, I think, whether 2007 or It eight. should be 2007, because I remember I was in Form 4, 2006. Mm -hmm. And after that, we came when I think the projects were like ongoing. Yeah. I think I, I attended one at Bambino or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I was the YP coordinator or creative enterprise coordinator. Yeah. So, you know, you get your boys, you get your boys in. So, yeah, I've got uh, D1, Third Eye, when we put the program together. We had an event at YP called My Club. So they used to host My Club. So it was a, it was about like young, young talent, yeah. you know, and if they were being facilitators. So yeah, so we're doing poetry, we're doing rap battles and freestyles, uh, dance, uh, visual arts. Started working with Elson Gambalu actually yeah. then um, on the visual arts component of, of YP because YP was words and pictures. And pictures, yeah. Yeah, so the pictures part, we needed to partner with someone who was in the visual arts space. So I had known Elson since 2003, Gambalu. Okay. So we started working together in 2003. Oh. Yeah, with Elson, with uh, Shadrach Chigoti, yeah. yeah, Harry Gibbs. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I I don't know. I think for like uh the people that have been there in those years from like let's say two thousand two thousand yeah they know these names they know these when it names. comes to creative industries. Yeah. You can't talk about parties and stuff and, and art events spaces without Harry Gibbs. Harry Gibbs. Yeah, Harry Gibbs was like the dawn of the entertainment. Yeah, Omuntu the Theater, Omuntu Harry's the Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. Harry did his his bit to push. Where's Harry now? He is in I think Copenhagen. Ah. Yeah. Oh, no, Budapest. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, dude, like, did a lot for, for the space yeah, in the country. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. And people like um, Shadrach Chikoti, yeah. Elson Kambaru. I think the visual arts, like, look at Elson as yeah. the somebody who's just like, yeah, the godfather. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's taken people from nowhere and, mm. like, just put them there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was, that, was, that was then British Council Consultant. Yeah, did that for, I think, two years. Uh, got other programs from the British Council Communications. I did a, a climate change communications project. Uh, 
hey, there were so many programs that we got yeah, involved yeah. in. So yeah, I was uh it was good until yeah. the Labour government got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, I found and myself it, jobless. And it changes <laughs> yeah, I found myself jobless. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that time, actually, that's when I think I founded Abstract Beats Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the vendor at British Council was yeah. Abstract Beats Entertainment. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we're doing everything through, through Abstract, Abstract Beats. Beats. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had the magazine. Uh, British Council was supporting UNICEF plan. They were all supporting the Abstract Beats Entertainment magazine. We had grown it to the biggest magazine in the country. We're doing 10,000 copies all distributed for free. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. If, if we go back there, okay. I tried not to take things too personal and have a guest here, yeah. but I knew you like when I was, like I said, when we were just finishing secondary school and I came here in 2007, that's when I actually mm -hmm. like followed Q, the one who is now in Malawi doing projects outside uh, music and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And abstract bits was something that I couldn't have followed because I was I was I was a very big fan of entertainment and mm. everything. And WAP was like another big project. I know after that you had several other projects later on in the mm -hmm. other years. And um if I do some things these days, it's because as a kid, I looked at Q and I was like, I wanna do the cool things that guy does. <laughs> I remember when we met, I think for the first time I was in Zuni, Zuni you came yeah. for Project Project. Yeah. Uh, so entertainment director? No. I, no, I I just started like a, I started like a, this, a, move, yeah, a yeah, movement yeah, yeah. of the, people the, that do initiatives, yeah, determination yeah. initiatives. Initiative, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. And even these days, I do things, I'm like, this is what I saw cute do. I think I can go do it. <laughs> 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 so I'm just trying to tell you uh, the influence that you'd have on people because you're doing some things which a lot of people were not doing that time. Mm -hmm. But people that just look at you would be like, oh, okay, cool. Why I'm saying this is because I want you to take me through your knack or your eye for doing projects. You know, there's being in the entertainment industry for the, for the industry, for the entertainment and for the money. Mm -hmm. But sitting there and saying this is a project this is how a project should be and i'm gonna start it here execute it this far and i'll close it at that edge like how do you do that uh <laughs> the answer is actually very simple i get the people who know how to my my role as a leader is to enable people who know how to, mm. to do the great work that they need to. And for me to provide them with the resources that they, they need, need. Yeah. to get the job done. Nice. And I think that's how you studied concept creatives. Yeah, yeah. Because you are doing music and then, okay, poetry, of which you haven't, you haven't tackled a lot on the poetry <laughs> side of things, but you came up with concept creatives, which is like an events company. company. Yeah. And it becomes like the... Mm. Um, what do you call that? Blueprint mm. of best events production in terms of everything, uh, planning, execution, uh, promoting. What was the idea? Why did you decide to do concept creatives, and how did you assemble the team that delivered those events? Yeah. So on the events part, um, I during Abstract Beats, we used to do this monthly event called Pillow Talk. It was cool. Okay. Um, but then I got a contract with Standard Bank to produce Joy of Jazz. Yes. In 2012. Yes. Uh, the first one, Nabueritsa Zahara. The second one, Earl Clue. So when Standard Bank approached me, I was like, I don't know much about events on this level. Mm -hmm. Let me partner with someone who does. So I approached um, a guy, Tendai Banda. I think he had done stuff. Uh, with Lake of Stars. I'm like, mm -hmm. my guy, there's this opportunity. You know about events. events. Can we work together to do this? So he came on board. We delivered the first Joy of Jazz. Uh, the second one, um, Tendai was not available. So I approached Wezi Mzumara. Wezi Mzumara, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, she had a lot of experience in, in events. Uh, so, yeah, she came on board. We delivered 
the second joy of jazz and then i looked at i'm like what do you sit go bangira nje rock hai you know so i saw an opportunity um so i founded concept creative and the first event that we did kunali ku capital hotel it was a concert with lawi and faith musa faith musa yeah yeah ku marki ku ja first event 700 people <laughs> and the marki was in the marki it was it was packed um dj kali was it tammy was, was that tammy bendera tammy bendera tammy bendera, bendera, bendera was yeah. the first production manager for concept creative mm. someone who knew events so i needed someone who can yeah be and there at a professional at level. a professional level so we assembled a whole team there were people who knew what to do and there were people who had a lot of potential that after doing it for a while we knew what to do really yeah, yeah so we grew as a team um yeah for a good number of years yeah we delivered events lady smith black mambazo or the kansime events uh joe stone oliver tukudzi which you were part of and had jambo with uh oliver oliver oh, that was an experience <laughs> like that was, a, that was an experience i remember like wow that was like so cool I remember like uh, I just talked to you. I had mm. just moved from Mangoja came here mm. the same year. That was mm. 2014 after I think the elections. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 2014. Mm. 2014 because I think that happened in August. I remember all this. I, I was mm. like, "Q, um I'm in your city. I'm here for some time. If you have anything, even if it means carrying guitars on the stage, if you need somebody <laughs> who can carry guitars around, please Let me know anything that you think I can do. And you actually like came where we're operating from in Area 3. Mm-hmm. Like, no, can we have a conversation? We just want to understand mm-hmm. things that you're doing. And I was like, the whole queue, I was like, when you left, I was like, guys, Q came here. And everybody was like, I said, Q, and I'm like, I'm a zone, man, I didn't know. And I was like, me? How? <laughs> and yeah, it was so nice of you. And I worked with uh, you on uh, the Tukudze event. Mm-hmm. Had a great experience with Oliver and Tugus and his wife and the band. Yeah, no, they were they were amazing guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Went to Kukuka with Jambo. He wanted full Jambo, not also the, the mafili. After Akuladi should have had a bit of dinner. Yes, I would just have just gone. I remember Oliver. He leaned to me. He goes, "Q, what are they giving us?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Ah, Oliver, hey, it's." It's free, it's so free. let's just so eat it. Just eat. But tomorrow, I'll, I'll sort you out. out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that was uh, no. He he had a great time after that. He was yeah, his soul was filled. He was like yes, yeah. And he came to Malawi. Wow, and he was down. a very down to earth guy. Okay, yeah. you know the legendary status of Oliver and Tugu. It would mm. be somebody that you think as if una zipamba mm-hmm. away from. Simple thing. He was like he asked her, "Can we go out for shopping? My wife wants to mm. buy zitenge." We got on a bus mm. uh, with uh, the other guys. When company, when I took them, company, when I carried them, we just bought zitenge. Went to like all the basic shops. See, bada, I just, I now we go to Sabah. Those are bada. We go Malawi. Zolim. The Zolim. Take us to bada. Went there. It was, it was like a very cool thing to do. I was like, oh wow, it was really nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's get back now to the events. Uh, you've done all those concerts and whatnot. There's one that I remember which I don't know how uh you described the first Annie can see me mm-hmm. event it was a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell me tell, tell me about it. What lessons did you learn from there and how did that help you to like um that was the first time after Lawi and Faith Musa the can see me show was the second show as concept creative. So we were like ah let's go bigger. Yeah. BICC brand new, you know? uh went to BICC we really didn't know the venue when you went we had um one ticket price so there was no vip there was no so every, it was just one ticket price uh and we had big problems at the entrance because we really didn't know about the good systems in terms of accreditation etc cetera, etc cetera. so it was a big mess it it and people could have gotten hurt because people were pushing fracas. yeah there was fracas so they had to just open the door to let people in but it was it was a total mess i had to go on stage and apologize to people and promise that we'll get things better so after that mess up but it was a great show <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only mess was that people 
push through so they yeah. can come in. They thought I would get with said what and yeah. all that, yeah. but they show itself. The show itself, the was... performances. Ah no, <sighs> ah, they were hot. Yeah, yeah. So after that, yeah, we we looked at systems, we researched, we tried things out, perfected it, and this. But the next event was coming. Everything was sorted out. Yeah, we made sure. And you we said had, you said new standards about doing events. Yes, make sure you have the right amount of people, especially processing people into the venue, and start on time. Respect the people who are there on time. Yeah. yeah. So when it came to eight o'clock start on it's the dot, eight on the dot, the production team is on stopwatch. Yeah. You know, there's a, even a countdown. There's a before, countdown. Yeah. We are radioing each other, counting each other down. Uh, all the cues are in place, pun intended. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it was, yeah, Concept Creative was an amazing experience when it came to, yeah, just putting together productions and, and shows. Yeah, we had, a, we had a great time. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then we move from Concept Creatives, we go to Quasar. Yeah. Yeah, because I think one of the other events that uh, you did as Concept was uh, you now sharing the vision of, of Quasar. Quasar. Yeah. yeah. What's the quiz uh, vision like? Who is involved, and how are things going now? Um, so our initial vision was to look at infrastructure development in the creative space. When we look at Lilongwe, let's just say good artists and creatives really don't have a home. Yeah, you know, mm. uh, our homes are bars, <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> restaurants, lodge lobbies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This is an uh, affordable and accessible. Yeah. You know, we, yeah, I, I can't mention many, if any. Um, so I had this dream of constructing an art center. So that's how Kweza started. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, had, had some land in Era 43 and we're like, let's dream big, yeah. you know? So I partnered with uh, a very good friend. He's an engineer, Washington. Uh, Washington, Jimuz, yeah. So, yeah, and that's how Quasar started. So we did the plans of the art center and everything. And the Quasar event was introducing that dream of the art center. Uh, but unfortunately, we lost the opportunity of uh, a grant because then we were not getting good cooperation from the powers that, mm -hmm. that be or that were. So... Eventually, the grant expired, but okay. it was a, we could have constructed the art center, uh, constructed uh, real estate yeah. that would, whose rentals would, you know, Offset make the whole, the, yeah. yeah, actually sustain the operations and the programs. No, that's sad. Yeah. So, okay. So the grant expired. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's oh, what cause... happened. So we're like, okay, still, we need to. Do something, yeah. yeah, as as Quasar. And the reason moving from Concept Creative to Quasar was because Concept Creative was also known for bringing acts, acts. from outside. Yes, yes. And I had a change of philosophy where I'm like, then what happens to the acts that are here? Are yeah. we only good enough for uh, opening acts when these acts came? So mm -hmm. we're like, no, we need to start working on our acts here. Uh, let's start working. Good. We now they develop to a stage. Good. Now we can start exporting. Bang on, bang on. Is that so, what's is that what's in the name? So they even the change of the name, the change from an English word concept creative Quesa. to Quesa and Quesa, which is to uplift, uplift, to build or elevate. That's yeah. So I, I'm I'm in a in a different space altogether. So even when people say, "Oh, who are you gonna bring in?" I'm, I'm not bringing anyone. Anyone. Yeah. No, I like I like that thinking. And it's a conversation that I think I've been having uh, a lot with people, probably with you in several forums as well. The need to push the Malawian narrative. Mm -hmm. We just cannot be importing. Mm. We're importing acts and in return, we're exporting the hard end forex that forex, we have yeah. paying these acts. Mm -hmm. And we can't unite or come together to create something that we can actually now start exporting. Mm. Of which I know we, we, we have had like stints of uh, people like I think uh, bands like um, was a band that you used to 
to be associated with a lot at your events. Uh, the likes of NST Kwanga. The head of yeah, Mafiliga. Mafiliga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those guys would actually go and perform at different yeah, festivals. Yeah, they toured, I think, toured China. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it's sad that today there are no more other acts from Malawi that are able to replicate that. I mm-hmm. think from the days of um, Benny Mankamba, when you like tour... Mm-hmm. World tours in Germany and mm-hmm. everywhere, then Tiku vibrations. I think mm-hmm. through music mm-hmm. crossroads, there were all these yeah. things. Apart from that, most of I I don't want to call them independent uh, artists, mm-hmm. but like most of these other artists that are coming through, are unable to like create a brand that can be exported. I don't know where the gaps are. Um, if you look at the Tiku and I think my Filiga, you. Realize Goody is the music crossroads network, yeah, yeah. you know, and opportunities coming through that network, yeah, right. And that's how these things happen without a network linking, say, Malawi with whether it's Europe, Europe. or wherever, it's not going to happen because you are amazing, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, to start with, how is a booking agent from Europe going to see you, you know, <laughs> on a live stage? Because when it comes to live performances, you get booked because someone has seen you live. Mm. You know, they don't book you because you have a very beautiful music video. Yeah, because you've got <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, when it comes to the live music scene, yeah, live yeah, performer, yeah. it's a it's a it's it's almost like a different industry altogether. Mm. Um so Music Crossroads has an international network. If you're plugged into that work network or you're a product of Music Crossroads, there are those opportunities. So what we need to do is how do we now start building those networks outside such institutions mm. so that uh, such opportunities are much more accessible like to a bigger to a bigger to a big that's the work that we actually need to to do to start doing but before we even get that you know to to that stage where we're looking at Malawi is a market Malawi is a live music market yes you know yes it's a big live. I think there was even a study, um, yeah, music, which and and that was the the conclusion. Goody, the what live music was bringing to the table was much more than recorded music, in terms of income generation. Income generation yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've got a market that we need to take advantage of. If you remember, my blacks in time, they were performing every, every weekend. Every weekend, yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so. I, I think they could even go, let's say, years without recording, mm. without making music, mm. but use the content that they have mm. and be on the road every day on stage mm. and perform and create income from their performances than selling their actual music anyway. Yeah. yeah. And they had uh, a loyal fan base. It didn't matter, would he? Anali party day low. Could he? <laughs> last month, Unali go golf club. The same Ubi Dabi. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we were blacks, yeah. Ubita. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So super fans. They 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 had super fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we need to, you know, look at the opportunities that we have here because there are many you can make on say international tours. Yeah. Unless you are like a headlining act at a big, 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 big festival. festival. Unless you do a long tour. If you see even the, the American artists or you're, the big ones, when you look at their tour Yo. dates, then you realize, Goody, we're not working. No. <laughs> no, no. Every time somebody is announcing a tour, yeah, you it's like 12, 15 to 20 dates mm. that are on there. And yeah. it's like nonstop when they start, it's until they finish and then they go mm. rest. But we have maybe not as big opportunities. Mm. But think of an artist, Kumayo Gunoko, who's going to say, I'm going to do a university tour in Malawi. How many universities do we have? We have. Bobo. Yeah. You might get it, man. Yeah. Gwambiri. Yeah. Gwambiri. Yeah. For you, what do you think is the missing, is the missing piece to start? Not to create the bigger thing, but to start. Uh, management. And I'm not talking could the artist manager, or mm-hmm. the management aspect of the industry. industry yeah. Because at the moment, they are, there is so much talent. When I say talent, I mean the people, it's... you know? Uh, but the people to actually manage or, or add value 
to talent hey, you. To talent yeah, to you. the person hey, now. Kwena kuti, Apul, this is what we can do. And put all those things, make all those agreements. For example, university tour with uh, Iman, you know? Um, to sit down, get in touch with other universities, make sure transportation is sorted, um, bandy or bobo, whether it's a, a live band or a DJ, the technical side equipment, the goodi, mulindi, mwabanga higher equipment to take on tour, accommodation, wose, bobo. Yeah. University, I'm gonna, the market is already there. You don't need to advertise no, Bambi. In, in the <laughs> campus, it's few, few ca- world. Of mouth poster there one yeah. on campus. I did also in entertainment direct. Yeah, yeah. Who actually does the work for you? For you. So that person now who will be able to put that whole tour together. Let's call him a tour manager. Yeah. Such people are the ones that we're missing. Uh, I always give this example. Would he? Tilingari forja, omlimwa forja. What we need are the people who do the value addition, the processing, yeah. so that for your job and poor people, the value has been added. Akare Dudu. Akare Marlboro Lights. Because you see, when you're speaking, I'm thinking of how many is my sambas, when is it just, yeah. Panobe, Unga Zbezu, Kamayenda, Mosim, Kamayenda, 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 um, and it's the same in, in the in the creative space. We're dealing with a lot of raw stuff. You know, we're not getting, we're not adding value to our talent. S- some are. I'm not saying everyone is everyone. not doing it. Yeah, a, a, a lot of artists and creatives are adding value to to their products. Mm. But as a sector, that's that's where we need to do better. Unfortunately, that is not done by artists. Because any industry is made of a series of business activities. Yeah. And when you're expecting the artist to produce art and also look at the whole value addition process all the way to the top, it's impossible. It's also a tech. Can't. Yeah, you can't. can't. So the people now to carry on the value addition in Pagana Kumamba are the ones that we're missing. And these are not creative people. No. No. These are administrators. These are people... Uh, and, in finance, hey, finance, they understand the money, how the money works, hey, could you, contracts, the whole ecosystem. Yeah. yeah, because there's gaps in our ecosystem. There's lots of gaps in our ecosystem. So that's where the gap is, and that's why we don't have those people to create networks to other territories, so that um, our artists here, Tabangangadika Pipeline Eight, could we can develop artists here. We know, Goody, we've established this pipeline to, say, for example, to the States, yeah. to Europe, to West Africa, to East Africa, to South Africa. De- if we develop those networks or those pipelines, then we can start funneling, you know, the artist That's Bobo. And then you'll be here. It's not because the people there, they've Amu got Amuona. No. No. no, no. It's because someone has established a network to that territory. Strategically. Mm. With papers. Mm. With agreements. Agreements. Also, I'm going to go to Zuga. I think he... Hey. I'm going to tell you about it. So that's, that's the work that, that needs to get done. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, like I said, I think time flies when you're having this conversation. This feels like we've just started in 10, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I know we have always been planning this. We need a whole conversation, mainly when it comes to the creative industry and all these things. Mm. You, When I look at you, I look at a history, walking history. You might, just, you, you might be 41, but I think when it comes to the creative industries, when it comes to, let's say, management of things, uh, understanding of poly- policies of how these things work, you hold a lot that I think you need a lot of time even to share that in different platforms, not just here on this podcast, but in different platforms because the things that you have experienced are things that a lot of artists need, not just from school, but learning hands-on mm-hmm. because you have been there, have done that. Currently, what are the things that you are so attracted to or passionate? What are the things that don't 
allow you to sleep at night. That you think, I want to fix this. I want to do everything that I can on this topic. Um, I think still, Kenya infrastructure, do you mean a human soil center? Um, so, like, if you don't have physical spaces and all you're talking about is programming, where is that programming going to happen? You know? Um, if my hope is to use my influence uh, whether it's in um, the donor space or the the the, the government space, to can we seriously start looking at what we need to build in terms of infrastructure in in arts and culture? Mm. You know the plans. The thing the plans are already there. You know, malo alibogari alibogari even dedicated kuti uzakaranga the cultural village or can arts village theater. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Even even Kosoma has a has a whole oh, planet, project. Right? Yeah, an art school with a venue. The drawings are there. Yeah, you know, I've seen, I've seen some drawings at, in some minister well, minister of youth. There's like a whole plan. I was like, okay, I didn't know this. Yeah. Thing. So these things are these things are already there. So don't go for the banga push indeed. No, it's yes. There's other priorities we understand, mm. but every day. The people setting those priorities are consuming art. Music. They're looking at all the visuals. They are, yeah. When they need entertainment, they look at the arts and the creative industry. Yeah. So to to influence um, investment in in that direction is something that I'm, I'm working towards. Okay. Yeah. Yesterday, which would be another day when this one airs, uh, there's been a new reconfiguration of the cabinet. Mm -hmm. And in that, there's a, an interesting um, observation that mm -hmm. I think the creative industry has noted, which is the move or the disintegration of the Ministry of Tourism, mm -hmm. which had the departments of culture and Department of Arts in there. In, yeah. In culture, right? Arts and crafts. Arts, yeah. And uh, is it antiquities was in yes, culture? in yeah. culture. Yeah. And then what life on the other side. Mm -hmm. I've seen people's reactions to that. I also have my own mm. uh, perception. For for me, I, I think I would be biased, to be mm -hmm. honest, when mm -hmm. I look at these things, because my main background is in tourism. Mm -hmm. So when I see a lot of things, first I see them from a tourism perspective, mm -hmm. and then I connect to the other things. Mm -hmm. You have... Uh, the creative industry as your real core thing that you look at. What do you think about the disintegration of uh, the Department of Culture into mm -hmm. the Ministry of Local Government from the Ministry of Tourism? And when I saw the change from uh, of, of taking culture to unity and uh, local government, government. Uh, one, I was surprised. Um, because we've always associated tourism with culture, culture yeah. and also there's no tourism without culture. So, and then I took some time to think of what are the opportunities in this new configuration. Mm. Um, and then I started thinking that maybe it's an opportunity for local governments to actually integrate culture properly into the local government system. So, and maybe there's an opportunity for uh, arts and culture projects to start benefiting from CDF and LDF and all the other funds that go to local governments. Maybe, hopefully, that is what they're thinking. thinking yes. um, maybe it's also an opportunity for actually look to have localized cultural policies or strategies for each, you know, local government. Um, and maybe there's an opportunity in terms of access to funding from CDF that we, you know, that projects can actually still get access or funding or opportunities from cent both central government and local government. Yeah. Maybe this configuration, there, there's that opportunity for things to happen in that manner. Um, I also thought about it from a heritage point of view yes, as yes, well. Yes. Um, looking at the different institutions and the movements that have happened in, in the heritage space. Yes. Um and 
which is the cultural space yeah. in in a nutshell yeah. uh that maybe that could develop develop more but all this depends on intention mm-hmm. and strategy and localized policies and the national policy that are driving towards that mm. the opportunities are there but um i'm hoping that was the heart behind it and hoping that from this shift the powers that be but it's also our job to say these are the this opportunities we see yeah. in this new configuration mm. um are we on the same page you know so i think uh i think maybe our job now is to see if we can facilitate our new line minister mm-hmm. and start having these conversations that yeah. welcome line minister chimwendo yeah 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 difiana <laughs> no these are things that we think need to be there. okay in uh, this year i think from the 1st of january i mm-hmm. don't know i just had like a switch of mm-hmm. thoughts i think it's something that i've been thinking i've been studying how cities work yeah. basically i think yeah. in the past year uh, because of um connections to festivals mm-hmm. and what not and i've realized that cities are given a mandate kind mm. of councils basically mm. a mandate to promote themselves and to embed culture mm. and creativity into the programming of the city yeah and probably i've asked several questions mm. online and in different places of what deliberate plans are there mm-hmm. where we can actually like um, push the creative industry mm-hmm. and the cultural industry into the programming of the city. Little mm. ways building up right now. Mm. New roads mm. and what not. Mm. Where's the art? Mm. Where's art in Nilongwe? It's missing. Hey, no but, graffiti, no murals. But it's sculpture no... nage musire seto. Tamango kali. So I'm like who is taking care of these things? Who's supposed to bring them out? Mm. Is art made for galleries and all those spaces exhibitions no it's supposed to be integrated yeah i think uh frankfurt if not cologne and it's one of the german cities there's actually a, a policy that a certain amount of investment especially in, in the construction that if you're going to build a building mm. you need to dedicate part of it to arts and culture, arts and culture. yeah uh to create spaces for that So I think that thought is what I think actually like put me back from being to pro tourism which is mm-hmm. like because I think the department or the minister of tourism wants to be to own these things kind of so that when they make plans of selling these things because that's what tourism does mm-hmm. it's create an experience so others can come and pay for it mm-hmm. uh they want to own it like okay no but you know tourists would want would want that's the narrative while the local government would have the investment to put in uh into these projects mm-hmm. because they know the value first like mm-hmm. as ajewa mugmanga building yanu ya chan 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 can you have something that represents the chewa culture because mm-hmm. it's you not because you're thinking oh when we are nzungwina ka dzaone ka so mm-hmm. maybe it's the the thinking it's it's a topic that we can discuss further it's a thing. topic that yeah. i think we need to unpack all the possibilities and opportunities mm-hmm. and not just gadi ifeo in yes. isolation but we dsetse to knock on those doors and introduce and just say can we can what are you thinking mm. so that let's get on the same page could he uh how are we going to move forward yeah yeah the former minister the present former minister mm. <laughs> of uh, local government mm. uh had started an initiative called the city summits mm-hmm which is more like a debate not a debate but consultations with people and yeah. what not and i think if it's still uh, going ahead with the new minister in place mm-hmm. i think it's the the right place to start mm-hmm. the conversation we need people from the creative industry sitting in those spaces and say okay now that we have even got there as part of the the ministry to say we also want our contributions into the planning and mm-hmm. how the city works so i think probably would uh the best place to start mm. would be in those conversations no definitely i think i love lilongwe i was born here oh. and for me when i look at the diversity and the beauty of lilongwe i'm like you know lilongwe can easily become the culture, one of the cultural capitals exactly yeah exactly q there's there's a lot to talk about and i think that's where they need now to do another proper session sessions basically not just mm. here but um uh, forums where we could have all these conversations and what not 
But in conclusion, uh, your journey, your journey right now cannot be discussed like this and not talk about the main thing, <laughs> poetry. Yeah. Uh, firstly, you were awarded an honorary doctorate. You are now Dr. Q. <laughs> <laughs> because of your work in poetry, I guess. Uh, it was in creative arts for my contribution to the creative arts. So whether it's what well, creative Music arts, yeah, and everything. Yeah. All right. Mm. So uh, take us through your poetry journey. How has it been, and what's the future like? I'm in Ndegeza Wele, do No, it's it's really been amazing. Um, performing at yeah. A good number of international platforms, festivals here, yeah. um, shows here, corporate events here and outside, uh, doing commissioned work. Um, and I think one thing that has worked for me is to be authentic to who I am and where I come from. You know, I'm never shy yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, if you see any picture if I'm performing, whether here or outside, I will wear something to do with Malawi. Malawi, yes. Um, and because I'm Malawian, and th that's where my experiences are, that's where my stories come from, and that will set me aside from another poet from another country. Mm. And when we come together, we're sharing so much about ourselves in our own context with the things that we've seen, our ideas, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So the, the opportunity to... Um, perform especially on the on the continent with some of the world's best mm. and the continent's best uh has been really really humbling um and just seeing how i'm received for example in south africa yeah it's <laughs> mm. yeah it's uh, it's really humbling and honoring um and here the the stages the spaces that i've been engaged on also it's, it's been a great honor um and i think the highlight it will always be 2016, the launch of my album, People. Okay. That will always be the highlight All for right. me. Yeah. And you are about to release another album. Yes. And I've listened to your current um, offering. And there's, there's emotions in, in that. Um, son, my, what's, what's the title? Uh, Father and Son. Father and Son. Yeah. Father and Son. There's a... An emotion which I think stems from your relationship with your mm. with your dad, which we have actually talked about here. And um what are people expecting? What should people expect from your new offering, the one that you'll be uh launching, like the album? I know it's poetry and music, the yeah. way it's been uh put together. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through that? Um, rightly said, I think uh, previously I was very much of a purist where I was like, spoken word is enough. You know, I just stand there and speak yeah. and that's enough. Um, so I neglected the the musician in me. So with this album, I have no biases. I'm just putting things together, uh, creating art, no matter what form it takes. Uh, and that's what I'm enjoying about this process. I've collaborated a lot mm. on this album compared to to the previous. Uh, almost each piece is a collaboration, you know? And I did that because art is best experienced as a community, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And collaborating with like a lot of young talent, Praise, mm. Paul Kajala, Esther, it's been really, really amazing. Um, for the launch, I intend to bring a different experience from the listening experience when people hear their album. So we've already started rehearsing and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a production Okay. and it's all scripted. Wow. So everything is scripted from beginning to end. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. No, I, I, I look forward to what this body of work has. And I know probably there are like a lot of pieces that really were inspired by the life of your life of your father. Mm-hmm. Because the title, the title is the son of a preacher's son, son of a preacher's son. Yeah, which is more like a lineage. Your grandfather, yeah, your father my father and, and me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's only you who's not a preacher. I think in that, like, 
three generations. Well, I'm or you preach, preach I'm a preacher in the creative space. <laughs> <laughs> like I preach differently. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Q, it's it's been a pleasure having you uh talking about your life and everything. There are too many professional things that I would want us to have a conversation in different spaces. And uh, I look forward to those. We will try to initiate some on our end where we can have people and have people's uh, input and whatnot. And yeah, hear from you so a lot of people can learn mm. from your experience and your thought process, even your vision. But um, for this podcast, I think we'll have to end here. I know you're busy with the preparations for... <laughs> The launch, yeah, April first, we'll, April first, yeah. uh, okay, BICC, BICC yeah. all right. Uh, how much are the tickets going on? Uh, the early bird tickets are ten thousand and twenty. Ten thousand yeah. for the VIP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so uh, look forward to catching up with Q at his poetry album launch on the first of April, and it's been a huge, huge pleasure sparing your time to come and sit it down on podcast. And uh, there's 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 so much that I can talk about, <laughs> but before we go, you you can come here and sit and not drop some poetry. So <laughs> that's how we'll conclude. So we're gonna conclude this uh, podcast conversation with Q by giving him a, the mic so that he can drop for us some of his lines. I don't know. I know. I wish I could hear something that people have never heard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Something that people have already heard. Like something from your new material. That's what I would want to, to hear. Okay. Otherwise, YouTube will be so... Dun, dun. Oh, is it just? Hey. Uh, it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll do the second verse of the next offering. It's titled Us and Them. Uh, yeah. So it's us and them. You know, talking about the gap. All right. So here goes. They sob, we cry. They wipe, we mop. They pass, we die. They breathe, we sigh. They game, we play. They claim, we pray. They plan, we plot. They line, we dot. They moan, we groan. They tell, we yell. They see, we look. They slip, we trip. They sip, we drink. They dine, we eat. They sit, we squat. They snort, we split. Wow. <laughs> not me. Not me. <laughs> we. <laughs> wow, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Kwawaniso Malewezi. Wow. <laughs> what a pleasure to have you. The son of, of a preacher's son. son. Yeah. I look forward to the album and all the best with everything that you're doing. This is the end of part one of a conversation with Q. There's going to be part two because like I didn't even do half of my prep questions and I didn't do any of the questions that came from the community. But we have done a lot of time. They are like a lot and I know people will be mad at me, but for the sake of time, okay. for the sake of time, or maybe let's just to look at the ones that like we can do like quick ones because okay. I think the rest are in the conversation. Mm -hmm. But for the quick ones, uh, how does he see the future of hip hop evolving in the next decade? Hip hop. Hip hop. Uh, I'm not much in the hip hop space. Mm -hmm. um, so I can only speculate in Malawi or globally. I don't know much. In about, Malawi. In Malawi. Mm. Um, I think what I love is, you know, is the vernacular cats coming out ah. and just taking center stage. Okay. And I think it's there's a there's a, um an awakening, I think, in terms of pride, in terms of our languages. Uh and I I'm hoping to see more and more on that. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to see that even go across borders. Yeah. You know? Listen to a Yao hip hop song when yeah. you are yeah. out in Dallas. Yeah. What do we listen to Got the Ghanaians, like people like Sakodi, something that we don't even understand what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, South African, yeah. you know, you know, Zulu boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Why are you not producing music anymore? I'm not producing commercially. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I still produce but here no. and there, but not, but I decide. It's a, it's a personal thing now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, 
why did he leave Real Elements Crew? Uh, okay, well, yeah, we talked about that. that. Yeah. Uh, ask him if he it is true that he produced one of Celine Dion's song. No, not true. Not true. What step is he taking to help arts in Malawi, considering that he has too much on it? We have talked about that. Yeah. We've talked about all the things that you're doing. Uh, how does he relate to Malawian politics, considering his father was a politician? Is he affiliated to any party? Uh, vote in the moon team. <laughs> vote in the moon team. Okay. I, uh, I, work, I work with the government of the day. Government. Ah, <laughs> that's clever. <laughs> How much money or cheddar has he made from art alone? And would we encourage an inspiring poet to make poetry as the main hustle? No. 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 Okay. Do art for the sake of art, but not for the for the sake of art and business, but do not count on it to sustain you. Um Invest in other things that will bring you income. And only that way you will enjoy your art because you will have the patience and the time to let it develop. Uh, when you're depending on art as something to feed you, you will rush and you're going to put, up, put out a lot of half-baked stuff. Because Zintuzina Zikarodia, Zapurido, Zisanashe. So the best way you can experience art is to have, not to depend on it as Kwenina uh, Gudi is bringing you money. Look at Malawi. Look at the top artists. They all have other sources of, of, of income. That's why they, they put out the, the art they do. And they can say no to certain opportunities that are not for them, that are abusive, that are unfair. Because they're like, no, this is my passion. This is, you know, I'm not saying you don't do art for business. Do art for business, but let it be one of the things that are bringing food to the table. Not the only thing. No better way to end this conversation there with Q. Make sure you subscribe to Podcast Malawi. Make sure you buy the ticket to his poetry um, album launch happening on the 1st of April. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we drop another episode. I've been your host, as usual, Dennis Iman, Mr. Kellyon, on everything else that's happening here, sound, light, cameras, and everything. <laughs> All right, it's been a pleasure, and ooh, so excited to have finally sat down with Q, and ooh, looking forward to who other guests we're going to be bringing on this podcast. From me to you, it's adios. And enjoy the rest of the week.